Please miss. Welcome to the kill test. It would work. The Headhunter's Axe. The Headhunter Axe is both a tool and a weapon of the native Igorot tribe who hail from the mountains of the Philippines. Featuring a sharp spike on one side that is used to pierce shields and armor, it also contained a wide lethal axe head on the other side designed to swiftly decapitate enemies in the heat of battle. An intimidating weapon, tribes would display the heads of their victims to strike fear into their enemies. The legacy of this deadly axe lives on today and can be seen in the video game State of Decay Breakdown. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the kill test. The Igorot Headhunter's Axe, a weapon that I've always fantasized about because it's very close to my Filipino heritage. To find out what kind of lethal damage your Headhunter's Axe will do, I will take your weapon and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Jordan, are you ready? Because I am. So <laughs> let's do this. Right now, I'm pretty intimidated. If that spike hits the backbone or the skull or anything like that, I think it'd snap right off. All right, Jordan, let's talk about your headhunter's axe here. Your edges here are very sharp. With every strike, it dug in very deep into this ballistics dummy. The spike you have here, even digging into the skull, did not bend. It feels good in the hand, and more importantly, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Jesse, you're up next. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm feeling nervous. I'm worried about my axe head flying off the socket because those bones are dense. You know, going into a human skull is not an easy task. He headbutted me. <laughs> All right, Jesse, let's talk about your headhunter's axe over here. First up, the handle construction. Somebody did some research in some Polynesian tattoos there. Looks good, and it feels good in the hand. Your edges here penetrated very deep into this ballistics dummy. Now, your spike here, not only did it penetrate the skull, but it also cut it, and it stayed true. Overall, sir, your headhunter's axe will kill. Thanks, Doug. All right, gentlemen, welcome to our strength test, the bamboo and skull chop. Now you get two totally different materials here. You got the springy bamboo that likes to bounce things back, and the skulls that like to break edges. So we're going to test both ends and the overall construction of your headhunter's axes. Jordan, you're smiling, so you're up first. How about that? <laughs> yes, sir. OK, let's do it. Jordan, nice job. Take a breath now. OK. <laughs> now everything held up nicely. Everything's tight. Doesn't look like anything moved. Your edges are still sharp. I mean, the fact that you made this thing light, tough, and in Damascus in three days, that's a heck of a feat. Good job. Thank you. All right, Jesse, how you feel after seeing that? Not good. <laughs> Not good? It'll be fine. Don't worry okay. about it.
one man. All right, Jesse, on the plus side, it felt great in the hand, and your edges held up just fine. But just all the shock wave from the force of those strikes split the handle almost in half. So definitely not going to be able to continue testing with this weapon. Well, Jesse, we absolutely hate to see that happen. Phenomenal job on your blade itself. But unfortunately, you had a catastrophic failure when your handle broke. And for that reason, we can no longer continue testing your weapon. I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the forge. I felt a little heartbroken seeing something that I put so much work into it would be broke. But I came onto this competition just to prove that I can compete with some of the best bladesmiths out there. And I know I've already accomplished that. So I still feel like I'm going home a winner. Well, Jordan, you survived the test, and your blade came out on top. So congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and there is a $10,000 check waiting for you outside that door. Very well done. <laughs> I just won Forge and Fire. I don't really know what to say right now. Sasquatch is kind of my mascot, and so I feel like that's a Sasquatch-worthy ax. The Horseman's Axe. Ah. Used by mounted knights and armies, the Horseman's Axe became the weapon of choice after body armor made swords less effective. The heavier axe with its concave blade allowed horsemen to strike more effective blows, using a sweeping overhead stroke that penetrated armor. Early depictions of medieval warfare shows the axe cleaving an opponent's helmet, delivering a fatal strike. In the film Sleepy Hollow, the headless horseman wields a horseman's axe. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. The horseman's axe, it's actually two weapons in one. It's got an edge that can lacerate and chop and a spike that can penetrate and crush bones. To see what kind of lethal damage your axe will do, I will take your horseman's axe and deliver lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Mike, you're up first. You ready? Yes, I am. As you can see, I'm recovering from an injury. So one of my students will have the satisfaction of testing your weapon. Well, Mike, let's talk about your weapon. Your edge over here is sharp. It lacerated deep into the bowels right here. Your spike definitely caved in all the way into the chest and straight into the heart. The only issue we have is that your handle is a little bit on the rounded side. So there is a tendency to slightly roll. But overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you. Alex, you're up next. You ready? Yes. Let's do this. All right. I'm pretty proud of what I created. It's just a little heavy, and that's a bit of a concern going in. Sweet. <laughs> Alex, your weapon here is a little bit on the heavy side. But you know what? It is well balanced. The edge of your blade here cut deep into chest cavity, and it broke the bones. Your spike here right into the heart. And of course, on the swing, it pretty much just disemboweled the dummy right there. Your weapon will kill. Yes, thank you. Next up is a strength test. Jake? Now, we know ice can be very brutal on an edge, so I'm going to take your horseman's axes and repeatedly strike into these large blocks of ice to see how well they hold up. Mike, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Mike, unfortunately, we had a serious failure on your axe. With this weld point in the junction of the belt hook. Now, Alex, you still have to pass this test. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. There's only one thing standing between me and a $10,000 check, and it's really big, and it's made of ice.
Fox, your horseman's axe did quite a job on that ice. Everything's still tight, and your edge is still razor sharp. Thank you. So all in all, very nicely done. Bladesmiths, our weapons tests here are designed to be exceptionally brutal in order to set your weapons apart from one another. Mike, your blade did not survive our strength test. For that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. OK. I am disappointed, but when I go home, I'm going to have a smile on my face. Forged and fire has risen me from the dead somehow. I will take this forward with me for the rest of my life. Alex, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. <laughs> it's surreal. It's really surreal. Well, come on over here and shake our hands. Oh, wow. I can't really fathom that I've won. Like, <laughs> I, I, I won. Definitely tops everything else I've ever done. Being the Forge and Fire champion just shows I've applied what I've always tried to teach others. Never stop learning. Pipe tomahawk. Nice. <laughs> Tomahawks are a First Nations weapon. The pipe tomahawk served as both a practical and ceremonial tool among Northeastern Native Americans. This variation on the tomahawk symbolized both war and peace, with a deadly axe head on one side and ceremonial smoking pipe on the other. Original tomahawks were made from wood and sharpened stones, but in the 16th century, metal heads were introduced thanks to trading with the newly arrived European settlers. This deadly weapon was light and nimble, making it lethal for both chopping and throwing. The versatility of the pipe tomahawk can be seen in the film, The Last of the Mohicans. Ready? Three. <laughs> Works. All right, smoke test is good. <laughs> One test down, three more to go. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I'll take your tomahawks and go ham on this big carcasses. Mike, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Mike, these are made to chop deep. It's easy to maneuver and deliver that kind of damage. Overall, sir, your weapons will kill. Yes. Good job. Thank you. All right, Cody, you're up next. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Cody, let's talk about your pipe tomahawks right here. The brass accents you have on the handle does make for a very good grip. It chops deep, it slices. Most importantly, your pipe tomahawk, sir, will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the strength of your weapons, I'll be throwing them multiple times into our wooden target here. Mike, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. OK. So right off, these have a really good feel to them. Comfortable handle. They're very symmetrical. Blade on this one held it beautifully. This one has a bit of a delamination right down here at the bottom. And then you've got that other delamination on the edge. But it's not coming apart. 
and it doesn't appear to be affecting the integrity of the blade. Both pieces are still tight, so excellent job. Thank you. All right, Cody, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. So nerve-wracking. Really? <laughs> Hi, right, Cody. These look very stout, but they feel very light. I see no damage on, on either. Awesome. What happened? <laughs> uh, I didn't follow the old adage, measure twice, cut once. The, uh, the difference in length is probably an inch. It didn't really affect the throw at all. They're solid pieces. They're strong. They throw great. Awesome. Nicely done. Thank you. The tomahawk was originally a native weapon adopted by the early Americans in the revolution against the British colonials. To see how sharp your weapons are, I'm going to take your tomahawks and try to penetrate these red coats. Mike, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Well, Mike, your tomahawks, sir, as you can see, are sharp. They cut easily into these red coats. It will cut. Yes. Good job. Thank you. All right, Cody, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Cody, your tomahawks are a pleasure to wield. They feel good, and I can index. Your tomahawks, sir, will cut. Thank you. Mike, Cody, you're both badass American bladesmiths. However, in this competition, there can only be one forged and fire champion, and that champion is Mike. Congratulations. You are the new forged and fire champion. Cody, unfortunately, your tomahawks did not make the cut. Cody, these are the kind of competitions we love seeing where two bladesmiths make weapons that perform almost identically. And it came down to symmetry. We asked for a matched pair of tomahawks, and that symmetry is what cost it. All right, Cody, at this time, I have to ask you to please surrender your weapons. Big shout out and a big congrats to Mike. You know, you brought your A game, I brought my A game, and clearly you're just a little better at measuring than I am. Mike, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion, and that is the title that comes with the check for how much? $10,000. That's right, $10,000, buddy. Please present your tomahawks to the judges. I'm Forged and Freaking Fire champion, and it feels amazing. I can't even believe it. I can't stop smiling, dude. I'm trying not to. pair of Viking war axes. During the Viking Age, the Viking war axe evolved from a common farming tool to a fearsome weapon of war. Its wooden shaft and single-headed blade made it well-balanced and light enough to repeatedly deliver hefty swings with fierce, cleaving power. The curved blade head could be used to hook any part of the opponent's body to forcibly draw them in closer for a deadly attack. The razor-sharp edge could penetrate armor and bone with frightening ease. Today, Viking war axes can be seen wielded by characters in television shows such as Vikings. As you know, I'm still nursing an injury. To be my arm today, I'm bringing a special guest from Al Qaeda Kali. Please welcome Staff Sergeant Chris Mans. Today, he will be my arm, or arms, to test your weapons. Chris, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. Chris, let's talk about your Viking war axes. On the initial cut, the long beard that you have right there 
hooked all the ribs. And of course, the beauty of having a secondary weapon is that when he pulled it out, he had enough attacks to disembowel everything. Overall, sir, your Viking war axe will kill. Thank you. Jeremiah, shall we do this? Yes, we shall. All right, Jeremiah, your Viking war axes are razor sharp. It not only blew through the ribs, but dug in, breaking through the lungs and into the heart. It is fast and light, and it will kill. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, next up is a strength test. Dave? To test the strength and overall construction of your war axes, I'll be throwing them three times with each axe into our mock-up of a drawbridge. Now, hopefully, they'll stay tight and right, not loosen up. Chris, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Chris, first off, well, they're balanced nicely and they match, which is really what I was looking for. That stout edge, though, kind of keeps them from penetrating overly deep. And you can see right about here is just a small roll in two spots. But they're solid, they're still together. Nicely done. Thank you. Jeremiah, you ready? Didn't get dressed up for nothing. <laughs> so, first off, Jeremiah, they feel like they weigh the same. They definitely throw the same. And having that curve on the blade allows it to dig a lot deeper than having a flat edge. But the bottom line is, neither of your blades took any damage. Well done. Thank you. Next up, the sharpness test. And for that, I'll give you to Ben. To test the sharpness of your blades, see how they held up. I'm going to take your axes and deliver three shots to these three fish. Chris, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Well, Chris, the gods of war will be happy. There's blood on your axe. It's a good day. The shape of that blade, I was a little concerned just because it's flat, but it really just cut right through those fish. Very, very sharp blades. Well done. Thank you, sir. Jeremiah, you're up. You ready? Time for sushi. <sighs> well, Jeremiah, same effect. Your axes are bloodied. They're now honorable Viking war axes. They are beautiful. I like what you did with the copper inlay. Not a huge fan in how thin the handles are. To swing it took a little bit more finger gripping. Two very well-made axes, obviously sharp. Well done. Thank you. Chris, Jeremiah, the judges have examined your work and they've tested your weapons. And they've made their final decision. The Forged and Fire champion is Jeremiah. Congratulations. Chris, your axes did not make the cut. Please surrender your war axes. You're always disappointed if you don't win, but the experience that you get from this competition, I've loved every minute of it. I'm going to go back home and keep making knives, and I'll probably make a Viking axe on the side. Jeremiah, congratulations. You are a new Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. How do you feel? That's amazing. You did excellent work. Please present your access to the judges. I did it. I won Forged in Fire. To be validated as a smith this way is really cool. This is a win for my family. Certainly a win for the history books. Stay in school. Study your history. It, it'll come in handy.
the Zulu War Axe. The Zulu War Axe is a deadly and elegant weapon now used primarily for ceremonial purposes by the Zulu tribe in South Africa. Passed down from generation to generation, this weapon was effective against enemies, as well as serving as a symbol of political power and resistance to colonial rule. Featuring an elongated arrowhead shape that swelled in the center, this razor-sharp blade provided a way for officers to reach over their own formations to tear down and destroy enemy shields. The current king of the Zulu nation, Goodwill Swalatini, wields this weapon in marches to this day. Your Zulu war axe look quite scary, but it's time to find out what kind of lethal damage they can do. To find that out, I will take your weapon, deliver some chops and slashes on this boar carcass. That's in your approach. You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well done, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, Dustin, let's talk about your Zulu war axe. It's quite surprising that something this light with not a lot of metal can cut deep into this boar carcass. Your blade stayed true. The handle construction is ovoid enough to wear. Even though it tapers, I have a very good feel for it. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Weston, your turn. So you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. My first concern is the handle breaking. Uh, after that, it's that junction between the blade and the tang. I mean, it's a weak spot. Anything can happen there. All right, Wes, let's talk about your Zulu War Axe here. What I find interesting here is that the design of this blade, there's a sweet spot in here with a little bit of weight. So that first swing alone cut in very deep. There are no glints or rolls on it. The handle construction is avoid enough to where I get a good grip and I can get a good feel on it. And more importantly, sir, it will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test the ammo box chop. I'm gonna test the strength and durability of your axes by smashing them into these ammo boxes. Remember, this test is all about what those boxes do to your axes and not the other way around. Dustin, you're up first, you ready? Let's do it. All right. Well, Dustin, got an obvious issue here. Uh, now I'm looking at your grain in here. It's beautiful. It's nice and, and velvety tight. But right here, there's a little dark spot, which was a, a crack. It happened right where the join of your tang and your blade is. And that little crack is a stress riser, and it leads to big failure. Sure. All right, Dustin, your blade has broke on the third strike against these ammo boxes in our strength test. Now, that doesn't mean that you're out of this competition. Your competitor still has to endure the same rigors. Weston, that means that your blade must survive three strikes against these ammo boxes. And if it does, you'll be the new Forge and Fire champion taking home that check for 10 grand. You guys ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Ben. All right, Weston, how you feeling? Nervous. I would be, too. Clearly, this is not an easy test. And if Dustin's blade broke, there's a good chance mine will as well. I'm just hoping it can take three strikes. Good job. Thanks. Well, Weston. It held up, nice job. This is a nice light ax, a lot of fun to swing. With every swing, I could feel the, the reverberation just it kind of jiggling in my hands. It was singing, really well done. Thank you, thank you. 
Weston, congratulations, your blade held up. Dustin, that means that your blade doesn't make the cut. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then exit the forge. Great job, man. Thank you, sir. I'm pretty bummed out. I really wanted to win this whole thing. Weston, congratulations, bud. Thank you. Good job. But this has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. This is not the result I wanted, but at the end of the day, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm healthy, so I'm happy. Weston, congratulations. You made a beautiful Zulu war axe, and that makes you the Forged and Fire champion. That's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Come forward and shake our hands, my friend. I am the Forged and Fire champion, and I feel elated. I came here to prove that I could compete with some incredibly talented smiths, and I came out on top. It's been a blast.